Hello everyone, my name is Pixel Riffs, and welcome back to the Skyblock Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. We're back here in the Skyblock world, and today, I don't know how it's taken me this long to get to this, we are finally going to start working on a bulk storage unit, a big old storage system that we are going to be able to basically collect everything that we are farming here in Skyblock, which, remember, is more or less everything because we started with just a tree and a bunch of dirt. Instead, today, I think we are going to be working on a storage unit that is going to capture outputs from each of the farms that we have designed and is going to be a place where we can store all of the stuff that I have been collecting so far in this Skyblock world. We're going to have a place for bulk storage for all of the cobblestone, all of the gravel and stuff that we are farming from zombies. We're going to have a decent amount of storage for everything else in turn. A little bit of manual, mostly auto-sorted though, and it's going to be one heck of a large project. And I think the place we're going to have to build it is down here below the house. I'm thinking that's a good location for it. Still fairly central, somewhere we can have easy access to all of that stuff. And besides that, the place under the house is kind of looking a little bit like empty and there is no fancy looking island over here like there is with the jungle island that we built. So I feel like there is a little bit of space for renovation underneath here and it makes sense to centralize all of the stuff that is vital for our living situation. Also, my snow golem seems to have disappeared. I'm not entirely sure what's happened to that, but we can make another one. It's not a big deal. We can we can rebuild him. We have the technology. So the first step towards getting a massive storage system built is, of course, going to be farming up the resources required to build just the storage system alone. And this is going to be a big project, so we will need a lot of it. Luckily, I've got a fair amount of wood already. We've been farming birch and spruce by the bucket load. And I'll be able to do a little bit more of that off camera. We also need redstone because this is all the redstone I have to my name. I don't have a witch farm set up. I'm trading my redstone from villagers, which has proven a very successful and lucrative thing. Like, I'm almost considering not bothering to set up a witch farm in this world just because of the ease with which we can trade redstone dust from clerics. And I don't really feel like going AFK when I have other series to produce and other stuff I want to do with my computer. The only problem being... We need a lot of it for all of the storage system filters. We will also need to create a lot of comparators. We have a few repeaters already, but the quartz is going to be coming from blazes. We still need a lot of redstone torches in order to make that many comparators. I'm talking at least a stack of comparators for at least 64 individual storage filter cells, if not more. So that means we're going to be doing a lot of talking to the clerics that we have down here. Luckily, I have a fair amount of emeralds and a fair amount of things we can trade for those emeralds so it looks like it shouldn't be such a bad time. I've got a few here, probably a few hidden here and there as well, and we can work out a couple of interesting trades with these guys to make sure that they are going to be traded up. Mostly we're going to be trading iron. We've got a lot of iron from the iron farm here. I have blocks upon blocks of it over here, and it is collecting more all the time. We're going to be trading that with the armorers, getting ourselves some emeralds, getting ourselves some redstone dust from the clerics, and then we will come back here when we are ready to make the storage system. We've got iron a plenty for hoppers, as well, so that shouldn't be a problem at all. I definitely think down there is the place for it. All right, time to do a lot of very, very laborious farming. Let's get right to it. Okay, back a little bit sooner than I expected. I'm not quite done farming up these redstone supplies. Got myself a stack of comparators, but we need a lot of redstone dust and things for the circuitry. But then I noticed this happening on the roof of my house as the sun started to set, and there he is. A pillager captain. Now, I'm absolutely not interested in starting a raid here on my Sky Island quite yet because the villagers down there would be under siege and we would have a very, very difficult time defending them without the proper setup. However, what I have come to realize is that we are going to need Bad Omen a couple of times over if we want to attempt to get How Did We Get Here, the challenge for getting all of the status effects in the game at once. And it's going to be very difficult to find these pillager captains if we do not have a pillager outpost on this map, which to my knowledge does not exist. So I think what we're going to have to do is name tag that pillager captain in order to make sure it doesn't despawn and then trap him in somehow so that we have a couple of pillager captains ready so that we can get both Bad Omen and Hero of the Village as part of those status effects. So I'm going to have to trap this guy. Uh, let's call him, oh, Captain, my Captain. And <laughs> I think we are going to try our best to sneak up there and name tag the guy without 
the rest of them interfering with me or shooting me off the roof. Hopefully he's still there because they will despawn if you get a certain distance away. Yes, there he is. Okay, we need to get a little bit of glass around him. This is going to be the tricky part. I'm going to try and block him in. Luckily, they don't move around too much. All right, let's take out this guy because I think this guy is potentially going to shoot the captain if we're not too careful here. Yes, there we go. Okay, I've tried my best to block him in, but I think with a couple of blocks there, yes, okay, we have him. We have him name tagged. We have him secure. <laughs> That's great. Finally, we have a pillager captain, and if we wanted to, we could even disable his crossbow to make sure that he uh, doesn't end up shooting me in the process, but yeah, wow, that was <laughs> a little bit of a fumble with the glass here, just trying to get everything set up but now we have a pillager captain in cold storage basically ready to uh, roll whenever we want to get that hero of the village status effect and it is actually no surprise that they ended up spawning up here on the roof because i feel like this section here actually has some of the only spawnable space as far as hostile mobs are concerned even during the day when these guys are supposed to be spawning the block light provided by these torches will actually block mob spawns like pillagers so it's quite lucky that that guy even spawned in the first place and that is part of the reason why i'm occasionally leaving unlit areas in the world because sometimes i do see mobs spawning up here but for occasions like this they're actually very, very useful. But anyway, with that taken care of and the dude name tag, so hopefully he should not despawn, we can continue working on a few redstone components. We need a bunch more redstone dust. We'll need some redstone torches as well. I'm working on my stock of repeaters. So I'm going to head back to trading. I'll see you guys in a moment. So with just a little bit more redstone collection left to do, I am making my descent here and I'm still using the time-honored trick of dropping a water stream down here and then pillaring down using some stone. I've only got my elytra on me just in case I need to make a quick escape using fireworks, but we're not really going to go down super far. I think about there will probably do for the platform and then at least we have a little bit of height to work with if we need it because we might end up making a little bit of a bigger storage system than I usually do just so we can have bulk storage for stuff like cobblestone and even mob drops because mob drops are coming in by the bucket load from this still to the point where they're probably having to despawn on the hoppers inside of there because it's generating enough mob drops and I'm not using them fast enough for various things. So I think Underneath here, we're going to set up a platform. We're going to bring some sort of light sources down here so we don't get mobs spawning here in the meantime. I've got a campfire on me and that's about it. But now we have this set up, we can set up a ladder from up there to down here and we should be able to lay out the rest of the storage system from there. I think my new rule number one for projects like this is always give yourself enough headroom. I have learned from the lessons of the jungle temple we built in the survival guide earlier this week and I am much more keen on making sure I have more than enough space. Is there still a pillager down there? I think I saw a peak of an enchanted crossbow. I might have to go and take care of that guy if he has spawned around the side of my house. Don't want him accidentally bullseyeing me while I'm working on this stuff and knocking me into the void. And the guy on the roof should be safely trapped in there. So I have a feeling we've got another one. Yep, there he is. All right, you can go in the void, mate. Bye. <laughs> okay, yeah, now I think that should be the last one. Let me do a quick sweep of the perimeter. Can still hear that guy on the roof, hemming and hawing. But nope, we do seem to just have the one other guy there. Perfect. Okay, so yeah, I've learned from the mistakes I made in the jungle temple, not giving myself enough headroom for all of those redstone contraptions. And here instead, I think we're going to be starting a little bit lower down in the world. And I want it to span a decent range here. It's going to be a little bit bigger than the storage system I have back at the uh, the kind of storage unit in my survival guide world. We're going to be making a large platform here, which is going to just have a kind of, you know, stepped storage system in here just so we can have enough storage space for everything I want to put in here. And the other advantage of having this in the position that we have chosen here is that it's quite close to the center of all of these different farms. We could reroute some of the drops from the iron farm over here so we have a permanent iron storage at long last. We could reroute the sky high kelp farm which as you can see one of the plants there has now reached the top. It's very exciting. A few of the others are stuck down there. You can see the pink flowers on that one but some of those are still growing slowly but surely. The slime farm and the mob farm can come up here as well and the cobblestone can be rerouted over here we could even route the outputs and inputs of the smelter into a system down here if we want to but the fact is everything can be controlled from an individual space and when you're building a lot of different farms like this it does make sense to do something like that just for your own organization
And here we stand amid a constructed storage system. I hope you guys enjoyed the time lapse. Sorry for not announcing that one ahead of time, but sometimes a time lapse just kind of sneaks up on you. And I realized that I had a live stream to do, so we decided to do all of this on live stream with the help of the replay mod. As you can see up here, the Wandering Trader has made an appearance, and this time he actually brought with him something really, really useful to what we're doing here, which is a surprise. I'm not used to this guy being useful, and alas, he has not yet provided me with more dark oak saplings but what he did bring this time yes was packed ice or blue ice in fact and we can't uncraft the ice unfortunately i do not believe ice uncrafting is a part of this pack but we have somewhere in here i forget where i put it now and this is why i need a storage system folks i'm pretty sure somewhere around here i put the blue ice there it is yes there we go so let me just quickly check that i can't uncraft that no sadly not never mind it's all good we're gonna need an ice farm for this thing anyway because to complete it to the extent that i want to complete it we're actually going to have a water stream that's going to go around all of the hoppers in the system dropping stuff off so that way the items don't backlog the hoppers because they end up just going around and around and around and they drop into the filters that they need to and we don't have to have 16,000 hoppers just to get everything to where it needs to go and so there will be intersections in that through which we need to pass some items so that water streams can continue on the same like Y level. They can continue at the same height and therefore we will need some ice so that the items can slide underneath slabs and not just get caught up. So that's kind of what we need that for, which means at some point to complete this, I'm going to have to make an ice farm <laughs> and also probably a bee farm as well because I want some honey blocks to align stuff. Honey blocks are the new hotness when it comes to aligning items for storage systems like this. But really what we have now here is a pretty functional storage system. It's certainly got a lot of chests in it and I need to figure out the categories into which I will be sorting things. We have a lot of chests here for bulk storage and the filters up there at the top are a few blocks off the ground as you can see which means we have a lot of space, a lot of headroom and I can expand these additional storage silos upwards if I need to. But to start off here I think on this side we're going to be dealing with all of the mob drops and stuff. So we're going to have, you know, rotten flesh, string, bones, arrows, uh, any other stuff that comes from the mob farm down there. Gunpowder. Gunpowder is going to be a big one. And probably the slime as well is going to be rerouted into this area because it's just kind of collecting by itself down there in a single chest. And I want the rest of that slime to come up here so I can turn it into slime blocks and use it for ridiculous things like our Sky High Kelp farm. I'm also potentially going to reroute other farms into this later. So we might have slices here for, I don't know, pumpkins and melons if we make a more industrial farm like that. Maybe if we start a raid, thanks to our friend up there, and get ourselves a Ravager, we can have a Ravager-based crop farm and use some of those. We can end up with a bunch of stuff and then blocks and other resources are probably going to come into these slices over here. So cobblestone from the TNT cobblestone generator we have up there. We want to have gravel from the zombie spawner. I don't think we're going to loop the husk farm into this, Despite the fact that it is just about within our loading distance, it's probably not going to be producing stuff all that much. I do need to AFK at that one for it to work properly. Instead of just doing what I do around here, like if I run the cobblestone farm, if I'm near enough to the mob spawner, I will probably get all of those drops passively, whereas I have to intentionally go over there and use that farm if I want it to produce any sand. But yeah, we're going to be able to do some of that stuff. Likewise, I think the drowned farm is a little bit too far out, but anything we can locate within, you know, 64 blocks, let's say as an arbitrary distance of this central island, I want to have a slice for in the storage system and the rest of it we are still going to hook up with automated filters and stuff like that so that then we can just drop everything into a single input up there we could even just have it be like something like we throw it on the floor and there's a hopper minecart underneath collecting everything or you know some sort of like input barrel that we can just chuck everything into and then it's all going to get beautifully auto sorted into these storage chest it's going to be perfect i cannot wait to have something like this and it's something that i probably will end up doing in the survival guide at some point the reason i decided to do all of this stuff on a time lapse was because you guys know the drill with these kind of storage systems by now this is the standard what i think of as the impulse sv item sorter circuit it's a comparator three redstone dust going down there 
inputting into that repeater, which switches off that redstone torch, which depowers that block, unlocking that hopper and allowing stuff to flow through the system. One thing that I had to relearn as I was building this was that these hoppers have to be facing into the comparator because that allows the push and pull priority to take place effect and for the items to stay up there otherwise if you have these hoppers facing downwards into the hoppers below them they can actually continue to push stuff through it actually kind of overrides the fact that this hopper here is locked because it is pushing items down into it from the hopper above whereas if you have the input facing in towards the comparator it does not automatically make that action it will still filter stuff downwards but it tries to filter it this way and that is when it gets stopped by that hopper the hopper below is not pulling items down into it because it is locked by the redstone signal that's the idea and that is something that has taken a little while to sink in for me but i think i am finally getting it now still learning about redstone after all this time and as you will see as it turns to night time i have a little bit of decoration in the cave walls around here i was not keen on my storage system with all of these valuable redstone components and chests everywhere turning into yet another mob farm so what i've had to do is some fairly vigorous lighting up of the place with glowstone. I decided to use glowstone as a light source here. Not the most easily concealed thing in the world, but instead I thought we could use it as a bit of a feature of this area. I figured we would probably end up building up some cobblestone around some of it, just to detail the walls of the cave here, and also to make it into something that feels like a bit of a feature. The, the, the texture of cobblestone obviously looks quite similar to glowstone, so they blend together quite well. And so I thought I would surround some of the glowstone around here with veins of cobblestone and other materials so that the glowstone feels a little bit more natural in situ here inside this cave. And it is feeling like, weirdly, the kind of space that you would dig out in a regular Minecraft world, except as you can see, we have made the entire thing from scratch in the skyblock world. It's probably going to need a little bit of stuff underneath to make it look nice from down below, but from above, I have to say it's actually looking quite picturesque. I quite like it. And I've left this side intentionally open so that we could expand the storage system if I decide I need a little bit more storage space. But if not, we can always wrap this up with something else. Maybe build a big set piece at the end of the hallway here or just close off the cave and have the entire thing be concealed underneath where we've got the house. I like it. I like it a lot so far and I'm very glad we've gotten into this. The next thing I'm going to do because I can't really get the entire storage system built up the way I want it to without getting a little bit more ice, which means an ice farm and a bee farm for the block aligners with the honey blocks. That's going to take a little bit more time and effort and will probably merit a completely separate set of videos for those farms. I think I'm just going to figure out where exactly I want everything to go and set up some of the filters here because right now these don't have anything in and I'm not sure what items I'm going to be using for filter material here. I will have to figure that out on my own time but I think I'll do a little bit more decoration of the cave around here and we'll figure out exactly where some of this stuff is going to go, what drops are going to go where. We'll finalize that and then we can have the inputs and stuff ready to go whenever we want them. All right, we've made it this far, and I reckon we're probably going to wrap things up fairly soon. I think I've got the majority of this stuff figured out, although I still need to work on how some of the drops are going to be getting into the system. But we have a decent category system here. I'm going to try and keep blocks on this side and items on this side. So we're probably going to put up another item frame here, and this chest here is going to be for iron because we're going to be getting that from the iron farm of course over there and i'm going to root root that in here possibly even with poppies here although i might want to convert those into bone meal in the meantime maybe we'll just leave them as poppies i don't know we'll figure that out but here we have all of the mob drops that we're getting from the mob farm you'll notice that witch drops are not part of this because the farm doesn't really deal well with witches it's killing them with campfires and of course witches take that fire resistance potion and they become immune so we're probably going to figure out a different way of dealing with witches in the fullness of time but for now i can trade all the glowstone and redstone i want from villages i'm not really that keen on farming witches right now anyway but we got the gunpowder we got the rotten flesh bones string arrows slime balls iron and then i left one more slice here just because this meant it was eight slices for this section then i'm leaving a section here open and all you need to do is drop in a couple of hoppers there with a couple of chests feeding into this lower section here and that's less of the bulk storage and more just of individual storage everything will just travel through those other chests once it gets past the filter 
And over here on this side, this is going to be the stuff that I'm farming in bulk, stuff like sugarcane. We've got the kelp farm, of course. We can have pumpkins and melons and maybe a few other crops coming in that would be easy trades with villagers. Now, on the other side here, we have the blocks that we can farm. So we're mainly looking at cobblestone and gravel being the big two. And I will probably end up putting another section in for cobblestone because you just need so much of the stuff. Alternatively, we could have that route into the super smelter up there or build another type of smelter down here and then have a regular natural stone stone section come in here as well either that or we'll put some stuff here for blocks that i'm just going to drop into the system to be sorted and all of the uh, stuff from that is going to end up in here so we'll probably end up with slices for all of the different wood types and that kind of thing at least the logs and then we'll figure out where we're going to store the other stuff later but much like in the trading hall we have in the survival guide world there is room up here on this upper shelf we can maybe add some other types of material here for decoration or we could put down some more chests which I don't have any of in my inventory right now because as you can tell I've used up a lot of them for this for the hoppers and for the storage chests themselves but we could put additional smaller chests on top here that could be maybe items that are built out of these materials items that are crafted out of things like cobblestone and wood so we could have the uh, cobblestone stairs and slabs and that kind of stuff all go in a section above all you would really need to do though if we wanted to have a separate storage chest for slabs and stairs and so forth is just create another section of the item filter and continue this out as far as we wanted to and then we'd end up with a storage system that is theoretically capable of storing absolutely anything we can get our hands on that is stackable at least and then when the non-stackable stuff we will deal with another time as you can see i've been working on terraforming the glowstone into the cliff wall here basically anytime there is a glowstone block i've trying to been trying to surround it with patches of cobblestone and have the whole thing be you know occasional slabs and stairs but mostly full blocks just so the glowstone blends in a little better and I haven't moved around to the side walls with that approach but I think I like this so far maybe we'll work in a little bit more detail here and there as well and some stuff hanging from the ceiling for sure once this whole thing is closed in but I think I like the way this is turning out let me know what you think in the comments as well the last thing I want to show you is exactly how we are filtering these items because I still occasionally get questions about this on my storage episodes that I've done before people asking why don't you just fill the hopper up with other items so that you only end up with one of the item you're trying to sort in the hopper and the rest goes into the chest well first of all let me show you the setup we have 41 of the item in here and we also have filter fish i decided that the thing i was least likely to chuck into this was the tropical fish that we've been getting you also can't eat them so they're not really doing anything they're just kind of there or maybe you can eat them but you can't cook them you can only eat them raw and they don't provide much of a health benefit there so i decided we had enough of those that i could just rename them all filter fish so that they won't even stack if i throw some clownfish in here by mistake and those are just all the way along here four in each hopper making sure the items get filtered and that is of course sending out a signal from the comparator which makes it two blocks along here and then stops before it gets to this block with the idea being that if I throw any extra items into this space here and we can do that now with the iron chest that we have set up I will set up an iron filter here that's going to filter down any items until it reaches 41 and then stop and what that does is it lights up the signal along here the comparator outputs a signal strength of three which is only far enough to light up this redstone dot here of course with a signal strength of four it would light up that dot there and that dot there the power would transfer through via the repeater that's underneath each of these blocks and switch off the redstone torches on either side as well because it was powering this dot here and this dot here and that is why typically you don't find people putting loads of filter items in here and having the items that you're actually trying to filter be a little bit less and it's because of overflow protection especially with items we're going to be farming in bulk like this and stuff that's going to be farmed in the background like the gunpowder and the rotten flesh we're getting from the mob farm down there it would be very easy for me to completely forget about that not check the chest regularly and craft materials out of these things or end up you know selling the rotten flesh to traders most likely but this entire system could fill up with rotten flesh very very easily and if there were a ton of filter items in here and then this also filled up to a stack of 64 in fact it would probably not even take a full stack of 64 to trigger this this would start activating the two slices of the filter either side 
and that would mean that these hoppers would completely start to drain because the redstone torches would be deactivated and all of the items would be able to flow through the hoppers freely. And that would break the filter system, which is something we absolutely do not want. And so thankfully, the solution is just to put four filter items in here. That way, whatever stack of items you have in here can never increase the signal strength to above three. And as you can see, even when that stack of iron ingots goes in there, it just filters it down to a signal strength of three and then goes back to two again once all of the items have gone through the filter and everything ends up where it should be in the chest down below. So that is how item sorters work if you guys are unfamiliar or if that you want a bit of a refresher on that. Hopefully that has made the explanation nice and simple for you guys. And that is where we're going to wrap up this episode of the Skyblock Survival Guide. The storage room is in progress and I'm super happy with it so far. Let me know if you like this episode in the comments. Don't forget to leave a like on it for me if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.